We hope everyone is having a good shift today. Uh, for those of you that have come to in-service, we've had a lot of discussion about our regional projects and our regional collaborations. So today we thought we would come and kind of give everyone a description of the projects that we've completed at this point, some of the short-term projects that we will be completed hopefully by the end of the third quarter this year, and then also some long-term projects um, as we move forward as a region and as a group. So we hope this helps everyone with uh, understanding the regional efforts that we have currently going because it's going to require everyone in the entire office to complete these and to improve our uh, relationships with other partners in the region as well as the community. To give everyone the background that we've talked about in our in-service discussions, we have been involved with all of the different regional partners, both law enforcement and firewise, on discussing how we could all work together better that makes more sense both from a community safety perspective, which is always our number one goal, but also how we could work smarter, how we could work more fiscally responsible and how we could lay down our jurisdictional issues and follow crime and suppress crime wherever we need to. What we did was we met with our regional partners and everyone described where they see their individual needs and everyone did a priority list on what in their agency would be the highest priority when we discuss working together regionally. When we did that, one of the biggest things that our partner CSPD discussed was increasing the number of prisoner transport units that we have done for them out of the court and transport and intake. And specifically, they asked us to increase the number of transports to their Gold Hills division. The detentions folks jumped on that, and that project has been completed. And CSPD has continually given us their appreciation how that has been able to keep more of their officers out on their streets for a longer period of time. The second request that came across the board was regards to Metro Lab staffing. From the EPSO side of things, that's something that we have not addressed in many years. So starting on June 1st, we moved one of our civilian positions over to the Metro Lab. So that has been completed as well. Another need that was discussed was a, an additional sergeant and additional deputy position for Metro VNI. What that would allow Metro VNI to do is to go from two street teams, which they currently have, to three street teams, which enables them to move throughout the region in much more of a fluid manner. Therefore, we will be moving one additional sergeant position and moving one additional street team focused deputy over to Metro VNI. That job opening has come out, and everyone should have seen that in the last week or so. Another area under Metro VNI is the Human Trafficking Unit. And we have never had a deputy position in the Human Trafficking Unit, which is probably not where we want to be since the vast, vast majority of massage parlors are actually located in the county itself. And that unit focuses on those massage parlors, and that's where they see a lot of human trafficking occurring. So therefore, it's only fair that we add a deputy to the human trafficking unit. Another area is our federal task force partners, specifically that being the Joint Terrorism Task Force and the FBI. There's no need to explain the additional focus on that in the entire nation as the nation is facing more and more threats from both internal threats in the United States as well as abroad. Therefore, we will be transferring a deputy position over to the JTTF. That process did occur a month or so ago, and right now that deputy will be moved as soon as they complete their security clearance. Our ATF partner, which we have had a long partnership with in their gun unit, that position will be coming open soon, and that position will be backfilled as the current deputy in ATF will be moving over to the EOD regional unit. That deputy carries some specific skills and experience in being EOD, and they will be a valuable member now of the regional unit. Therefore, we will be backfilling that position in the ATF gun unit. Another priority area is our community impact teams. And when I say that, we have different regional units which are doing different regional projects. What we will be doing as an office is we will be reorganizing our crime reduction unit and utilizing some of the skill sets in the crime reduction unit to work jointly with the CSPD gang unit 
and there will be several deputy positions moving from the Crime Reduction Unit over to the CSPD Gang Unit, which works regionally. The second community team that we will be working with is the DART team. DART stands for Downtown Area Response Team, and that area includes both the county area of the west side of Colorado, commonly referred to as No Man's Land, as well as the entire area from Manitou Springs, basically, all the way down into downtown Colorado Springs. They will be focusing on multiple issues in that area to include homeless issues. It's very, very common that CSPD will focus on the homeless issues. And traditionally what occurs is they run the homeless population from the city's jurisdiction into the county itself. So that deputy will be working with a team on that entire west side and downtown area. Ultimately, what our crime reduction unit will look like for EPSO will be we will maintain one sergeant EPSO several deputy slots, CSPD will be sending over two officers, and then other regional law enforcement agencies have requested to place officers on that unit as well. So the crime reduction unit numbers will not vary greatly from what it currently is today, but individuals will be reassigned to other community impacts, and uh, but EPSO will still have a crime reduction unit that will focus on county issues. Other community collaborations that I'm sure you've heard about is a communication consolidation with our dispatch center. The first step of that will be a consolidation with Fountain PD, and you can expect to see that begin to occur in October of this year. And ultimately the goal is, and this will take several years, is to consolidate all of the regional PSAPs into one and then we can start beginning to use proximity-based dispatch, which is occurring around the nation and is the best way to serve our community so that they can dispatch the closest units immediately without having to transfer 911 calls, which is what we currently have to do with the current system. I'm sure everyone has heard about a, the possibility of a regionalized training location. There are two options right now that we are looking at that we are vetting, so that process is continuing, but we have to start with a location before we can move forward with any other type of regionalization in regards to training. Now, we will be continuing to train together, and you will see much more of our EPSO trainings being opened region-wide so that any agency that needs assistance can come to our trainings, and on the other side of things, you will have the opportunity to attend multiple outside agency trainings with other departments in the region. A regionalized evidence facility is still something that is being considered and is out on the table. Cannot say there's anything upcoming in reference to a regionalized evidence facility, but what many don't realize in the community is that once we bag and tag evidence and put it into evidence, actually it, it moves over to the DA's office oversight. So it would be much more efficient both from a prosecution side of things as well as a storage side of things if we all work together in the region to do that. Our tactical teams will begin to start training together in the region, and you will see us utilizing outside agency assistance whenever need be. In the last couple of weeks, we have been requested to go into other jurisdictions and assist them with their operations, and that will continue. But we will lead the decisions on what a regional team may look like, the timeline, and the specific processes to that to the leaders of our TAC teams, respectively. In following with current state statute, which was just approved this year or voted in, we are working with our regional partners to include CSPD and the district attorney's office, as well as Fountain and Monument in Manitou Springs on a regional officer-involved shooting process. And you will see movement in the next several months as our detective unit and CSPD's detective unit have started to work together to create procedures and processes on how officer-involved shootings will be dealt with. A couple of units that will be EPSO units, they will work with other agencies quite extensively but um, the members will be made up of only EPSO at this time, will be our community outreach and impact unit, which we have completed the sergeant process, and that sergeant will begin work on June 15th of this year. You will see a couple of deputy openings coming out in the next couple of weeks. 
and we're very excited about that unit. That's something that we'll be working very, very, very closely within the community and something that every police agency in the nation right now is trying to get better at. So that's something that we're excited about. And as we begin that unit, it will be an EPSO only unit. The other will be a recruiting specific sergeant. That sergeant will be selected and we anticipate them beginning those duties in July. Now, something that that sergeant will be working very, very closely with is our training section. Our training section is increasing the number of trainings that they will be offering internally almost twofold. As many of you who have attended the recent RBT active shooter training realize, they are very, very time intensive when you do RBT training. But in this day and age, that is the type of training we need to do to keep up with the challenges that are going on around the nation. And what you will see is those RBT trainings will occur now monthly, sometimes several times a month, and they will be addressing ongoing and recent issues that have come up and will be open to deputies in the entire office. So that recruiter will be not only focused on recruiting the best that we can get to come into our office, but will also be very, very involved with our training section as they ramp up a lot of the reality-based training here in the near future. So as we've discussed in the in-services, some of these positions will be open office-wide. Some of them will require specific experience just from the patrol bureau, and others uh, we anticipate just doing hirings from the detention side of things. So we hope this offers some exciting opportunities for you. If you have any questions, feel free to call me at any time. If you would like us to come down and give this briefing in person to any of your units, Units, your briefings. We would be happy to do that as well. But again, thank you for what you do. Please be safe, take care of your families, and have a great remainder of your shift. Take care.